I've been away for a few services. Uh, I heard Sunday service was on fire, so I have to go back and listen to it. I haven't had a chance to. Um, I want to read you Psalm 100. It says, Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. You know, there's a lot of things that are happening in my life right now that are good, some that I will share in due time. But I was thinking about this today, and uh, looking back at me as a person, and, and I am amazed at how much I have changed overall, you know, in terms of how I talk to people and how I behave, how I, now I am able to have a difficult conversation with someone, uh, you know, when the stakes are high and, and you know, there's a lot to lose, but you actually have that courage and that wisdom to have a conversation without being hurtful, without being mean, mm -hmm. without yelling, to actually talk and also be able to listen. It's really important, you know. I saw uh, someone posted this online. It said, listen and silent are spelled with the exact same letters. Think about it, you know. And I don't even think. Uh, it's it's really important that we listen to God and we allow Him to to work in us, uh, you know, so that we can continue to grow. And and I'm very thankful for the wisdom that He has given me, that have led me to make uh, some decisions, you know, throughout all this journey that have taken me to where I am today. And I'm I'm very glad to be where I am, you know, be a part of this church that, uh, you know, we all love each other and we want to continue to grow together and the message that is being revealed through your pastor, it's, it's great and all the things that people share and all those. So it's, it's a cause for, for joy, for shouting, you know, how Amen. good God is. Amen. And then I, uh, I was reading this also today, Psalm 66, and I'm going to read the whole thing. It says, Shout for joy to God, all the earth. <laughs> Sing the glory of his name. Give to him glorious praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies come cringing to you. All the earth worships you and sings praises to you. They sing praises to your name. Selah. Come and see what God has done. He is awesome in his deeds toward the children of man. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the river on foot. There did we rejoice in him who rules by his might forever, whose eyes keep watch on the nations. Let not the rebellious exalt themselves. Selah. Bless our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. Who has kept our soul among the living? and has not let our feet slip. For you, O oh God, have tested us. You have tried us as silver is tried. You brought us into the net. You laid a crushing burden on our backs. You let men ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water. Yet you have brought us out of, of, to a place of abundance. I will come into your house with burnt offerings. I will perform my vows to you, that which my lips uttered and my mouth promised when I was in trouble. I will offer to you burnt offerings of fattened animals. With the smoke of the sacrifice of rams, I will make an offering of bulls and goats. Selah. Come and hear, all you who fear God, and I will tell what he has done for my soul. I cried to him with my mouth, and high praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But truly God has listened. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, because he has not rejected my prayer 
or remove his steadfast love from me. The good things that God does in our lives, we got to shout those out mm -hmm. for others to hear mm -hmm. because we have experienced the goodness of God, the love of God, mm -hmm. and I believe it is our duty to at least share those things with other people yeah, so that that little uh, spark that might be there that needs to be ignited gets lit up and that desire to know more of him and, and that curiosity that is waiting to be ignited in someone's spirit gets lit up right there in that moment. We don't know how God's going to reveal himself to that person in that moment. It could be a major breakthrough. It could just be a little thing, although there's nothing little to him. But let's just go out and continue to praise him and share with people the good things that he has done in our lives mm -hmm. because there's a lot of people out there that are waiting for that spark to just lit that fire inside. Yeah. Any prayer requests or testimonies? James? situation and, and uh, they put some stints, theoretically putting some stints in her heart to send her home if all looks lost, so I just pray for her and my husband always just lift them up.
stadium events and not just that, not just for a one-time thing, but for something that's mm -hmm. carried on and just goes out like a wave and that there's no stopping uh, what God's doing, that we just be more of a part of that and lift up the fellow soldiers, you know, in the uh, armor of God that are reaching out and that the, uh, the mantle of Billy Graham stadiums as Brother John was talking about and uh, <clears throat> Pastor Dave was talking about how they prayed for Iowa State and uh, there was intercession for Iowa State up in Ames and uh, the glory fell on a Baptist Bible study up there which was a public bathroom in the name of the Lord and uh, for months to come you know these guys are hungry and just going after God and going after God and going after God and then the word stadiums came up and they started praying about uh, the glory of God coming into a major gathering in a stadium and it was full of unbelievers and partiers and everything else like that and the glory of the Lord came upon that stadium and all saw the face of the Lord the Holy Ghost was moving through the place was exchanging thousands of souls at one time and uh, in the midst of that I was reminded of Jack Trey Stadium and uh, I declared over that stadium that there would be no trace of unbelief when the glory of the Lord fell upon them and praying for success of the Cyclones to draw in major crowds to fill that stadium up so the Lord can release his glory. Mm -hmm. Well, this is what John was just talking about in other states, and I'm redeclaring it here for us. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for bringing us to your presence, Lord. We thank you for all your goodness, for taking care of us, Lord, for giving us your word and giving us your spirit. We cast all of our cares upon you, Lord. We know, Father, that your goodness, that your love, that your grace is never abandoned. We know that you hear all of our prayers. And we know, Lord, that you move in whatever situation we bring to you, Father believing with faith, knowing that the finished work of the cross has taken care of everything and it is done, it is finished. We're just waiting for the manifestation of your glory, of your promises to take place on this earth, Lord. Because your word
word you say that your will be done on this earth as it is done in heaven. We declare, Father, over all of those that are suffering from some sort of illness or disease or health condition, that it is gone right now in your name, Jesus, that the manifestation of your healing is taking place as we utter these words, Lord, in your name. Believing, Lord, that you said that it will happen. We thank you, Father, for keeping yes, us safe at all times whenever we go out into this region, into this world, spreading your word. Thank you, Father, because we know that you are always with us. You never abandon us. You always keep us safe. You always speak to us and you put things in our heart for us to meditate on it and listen to your word. You go out and speak to others about who you are. We thank you, Father, for this opportunity that we have, that we can go and talk to others about you, so that that fire is lit in their spirits, Lord, and they hunger for you, Lord. We thank you, Father, because it's all about you. We give you all the praise, all the honor, all the glory, Father. You are worthy, Lord. It's all about you. We thank you, Father. We thank you for all the promises that you have given us that we know that manifest on this earth when we declare your word. We stand firm in that word as we declare it and we believe that it will manifest, Lord. We know, Lord, that you are releasing something in this region, in this state, in this country, Father. And we stand here with the expectation, Lord, that the manifestation of what you are releasing we will see. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. The word that you release in this place for us to take out and here we go. We thank you because you are good. We thank you, Father, because you love us. You gave your only son to die for our sins so that we can come to you. We thank you, Lord, for us your spirit. Thank you, Lord, for calling us your children, Lord. It's all about you, Lord. It's all about you. Thank you, Jesus. For this Friday, right? This Friday, doors open at six. Uh, they're expecting from the from the PRC Patrol Park. Uh, th those are the ones in the farther farm line, going along the beach. So you want to get going? Be there at six. Pretty close to it. Uh, start at seven. Start, you know, just like it goes about ten. This is going to be a time of pressing in, worshiping, pressing in, worshiping, and, and uh, declaring, declaring, declaring. speak the word. Will you not Amen. provide us again that your people may rejoice in you. I am a believer and these signs do follow me. In the name of Jesus, I cast out demons. I speak in new tongues. I lay hands on the sick and they do recover. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body. Every disease, germ, and every virus that touches this body dies instantly in the name of Jesus. Every organ and every tissue of this body functions to the perfection to which God created it to function. And I forbid any malfunction in this body in the name of Jesus. I receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, the eyes of my understanding being enlightened. And I am not conformed to this world, but am transformed by the renewing of my mind. My mind is renewed by the word of God. The Lord reviews the devourer for my sake, and no weapon that is formed against my finances will prosper. All obstacles and hindrances to my financial prosperity are now dissolved. The Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants, and Abraham's blessings are mine. Thank you. 
Remember Jody as she uh, is experiencing 20 years old for the second time.
Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We bless your name tonight. Lord, we're so thankful to know you, to be found in you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for everlasting life, God life. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name tonight, Lord. We praise you. You are a great and a mighty God. Yes, Hallelujah, Lord. Jesus. Hallelujah. The only true and living God. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. God bless you. You may be seated. It was great to see Cindy up here dancing before the Lord again. Thanks, Cindy. That blessed me. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God bless all of you tonight. Appreciate you being here. And I appreciate the testimonies, as always, and uh, for uh, sharing your prayer request with us, allowing us to be a part of that. And I, I do think that all of us, you know, uh, I, I talked about it a little bit Sunday, but it's knowing or having a revelation of Jesus, uh, God in flesh, but not just the revelation of Jesus, but us in him. And, uh, you know, everything that I heard talking about tonight was reaching out to other people. And, and uh, what we're doing is teaching. And uh, so it, it would be good if we taught like Jesus. Amen? Amen. Because we, we have the same testimony where the Lord said that the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me mm -hmm. you know, to preach the gospel. Well, that's exactly what each of us has. Exactly. And uh, how we do that is unique to each one of us because of our own personalities and our, our own backgrounds and, and of course, the, the people that we interact with. Um, it's, it's always important, though, that we, that we remember that that is our purpose. That's our reason for being here is to share the good news. Same same purpose Jesus had, to reveal God in the flesh. Praise the Lord. And uh, so how we do that, I think it helps us to go back and look at the, the Word of God and see, see how Jesus did it in all these different kind of avenues, venues, and, and uh, opportunities that, that he took advantage of. And also that, you know, that, that we do it in love and that we do it with grace not shaming people or guilting, like Tim said, you know, one thing people need probably more than anything is to feel like they have value, yes. you know, and of course a lot of people grow up thinking they don't have because they've been told or maybe their environment or whatever uh, just didn't necessarily testify to that, but uh, everybody has potential it's Amen. up to the other people around them to bring that potential to its peak, to a place where it can really be, be uh, seen. And sometimes it takes more effort than others. Some people have, uh, I don't want to just say low esteem, but just self-doubt and, and uh, insecurity and so on and so forth. So the way we, the way we interact with people has a, has a lot to do with how, how they take that and move forward with it. So, I want to start in Matthew chapter 5 and beginning with verses 1 and 2. Now this is the, you know, the Beatitudes and it's one of, probably one of the greatest teachings I think that Jesus uh, ever did because of its magnitude, because of the, how, how far he goes with it, how deep he goes with it. So we're going to start there just at the beginning of uh, chapter 5 where it says, Seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was said, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth, and he taught them, saying, and then he goes on, you know, you've heard this and that and so forth. And, but let's drop down to verse 17, if you will, Sheila. Verse 17. Think not that I'm come to destroy the law or the prophets. I'm not come to destroy, but to fulfill. So Jesus wasn't doing away with the law in as much as he was fulfilling the law. So, you know, we look at it, and because of him, the law is no longer applicable to us 
in the way that it was before Jesus. In other words, it's, the law was a means to an end, where now uh, it's a means to Jesus. It's a way to get us to the end of ourselves, to where Jesus can be uh, revealed to us, and then eventually to us. Verse 19. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Um, I, 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 I'm trying to remember what, what verse it is, but I won't, let, won't force you to go there. But what, he, what, what the Lord goes on to say is that unless our righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, mm -hmm. we don't enter, that right. we're not getting in. And the reason for saying that is because the, the scribes and the Pharisees were the strictest uh, religious people of their time. And, uh, of course, they were very rigid about the law and the keeping of it to the point of exaggerating it and stretching it beyond, beyond even what Jesus was teaching them. And uh, so when we're dealing with people, they need to understand that self-righteousness will never get you anything. And this has been the problem a lot of times with the church, not, maybe not even intentionally sometimes, but just that when we approach other people, they get the feeling or the sense that, it, that we are righteous and they can't live up to that reality when in fact we know we're as flawed as anybody is. And it's the righteousness of God that will make the difference in their life. And they need to know that because Jesus goes on to then tell, and I won't go into all of it because we've talked about it plenty of times, and I know you, you've uh, read these yourself, but where he says, you know, you've heard it said, but I tell you this. You know, you've heard it said, uh, thou shalt not murder or kill. But I'm saying even if you have hate in your heart for a person, right. you're guilty right. in the eyes of God. That's how, that's how stringent the law is. They had dumbed it down and uh, tried to make it doable. Right. And Jesus is setting the bar so high, not, not to frustrate, frustrate them, but to see that it's, this, this isn't about you being able to do this. This is about the impossibility of you doing it right. will cause you to come and trust in me, exactly. in, in God's grace. He talks about adultery and all those things. So we're not going to go into all that since because what he's doing is trying to show that these scribes and the Pharisees, they're not able to do this either. They may have dumbed it down enough to where they can do some things and discipline themselves to do it, but the intent of the law is to show that in and of ourselves, we cannot come near the, the, the holiness, the righteousness, and the purity of God. Amen. So we need to have a mediator. We need to have an intercessor. We need to have a, someone, like Job said, oh, that there were someone who could stand between me and God. Well, there has been. You know, that has happened, praise the Lord. And that someone is Jesus, of course. So I was just thinking that, I don't know, maybe, have you ever, have you ever uh, had someone get uncomfortably close to you when they talk? <laughs> you know, I mean, some, they just, you know, you, it's like right this, and, and you just, you're, you know, you're trying to yeah. back up, and they, they just move in a little bit further. Well, close talkers, they don't seem to realize how they intrude on personal right. space, you know? Right. And it's, it's awkward, right? But you might be surprised that I see God as a close talker. Amen? Amen? But God invades our space so that we can not only hear what he's saying, but we can feel his presence. Uh -huh. And sometimes that's uncomfortable. Uh -huh. But it's it's God's love that does that. It's, right. it's his desire to have this intimacy with us. And so, you know, it, it's just e it's easier to tell somebody how much God loves them than it is sometimes to believe that God loves me individually, you know? I mean, I, I know, uh, let, let, we can just look at this John chapter 3. Uh, verses 16 through 18, and we know the scriptures, for God so loved the world. And uh, that he gave his only begotten son, right? John 3, 16, so 
God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So condemnation doesn't come except when we reject Christ. Without Christ, all we have is the law, which condemns everybody, right? We need to remember that when we're dealing with other people. For God so loved the world, but that gives the impression that, yes, God is just this God of love that just loves kind of universally or generically, when in fact God so loved the world individually. Each yes. individual in the world yes. is as important as anybody. Exactly. Everybody is you know, ideally and identically loved by God personally. And he's the only one that really knows us Amen. in the depth of our personality and who, and who and what we really are. So, of course, God loved the world. But Jesus is revealed in the scriptures as seeing and loving people for their individuality, for who they are as a person, for their individualness, not just because they're a part of the human race. You know what I'm saying? And so uh, he went out of his way to make people grasp that reality, that this is about me and you, right. yes. personally, right? Yes. So the Sermon on the Mount is, you know, chapters 5 through 7 there in Matthew, and it reveals the love of God for people. Right. Matthew chapter 5, 1 and 2 again, Sheila. Seeing the multitudes, you know, he, he went up the hill, he went up in the mountain. And the up, multitude went up into the mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth, and he taught them. Now, he saw these crowds, and he could have done like I feel sometimes, and probably everybody does. He could have tried to dodge them. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, have you ever, you know, there's people that just are needy, and sometimes, you know, after a while, you just, you know, kind of, don't want to go there right at the moment. You know, you just, right? But so Jesus could have just, he could have just kept on going up the mountain or down the other side. He could have just moved on. But he didn't. He stopped. He stayed. He could have started out when he did start talking to him because he was, you know, he was constantly being, having demands placed on him. He could have just started talking about what terrible sinners they all were. Right. Yeah. I, uh, you know, you've got problems because you're, you're reprobates. You know, you're, you're living a horrible life. You're doing all these bad things. But teaching is more than just passing on data or, or information. Right. And here's what Jesus innately knew, and I think that we learn over time, that teaching is really a way to honor another human being. It isn't like, you know, you're superior because you know more. You, they may know more than you do. Right. It's just that you have something to share. So... Teaching is really, when we're, when we're witnessing to people, when we're sharing with people, we're teaching. We're, we're revealing the reality and the truth of Jesus. And that isn't, you know, it isn't like a, a, an authoritarian type of thing. It's, it's a way of, of honoring that other human being, sure. of elevating them, of helping them yes. to understand their value, how God sees them, how, they, how, how God wants them to experience life. Amen? Look at 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 and 7. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. People need to know, and we need to remind ourselves exactly. that Jesus is big enough to handle the things that keep us up at night. Exactly. If we'll just give it to him Amen. and leave it with him. Amen. Amen. He, we, we have to learn, and people need to know. God wants to take those. Yes. We sang the song, all you, that are la all you that labor, all you that are heavy laden, bring your burdens to me. Leave them here. You know, my, my yoke is easy. Yes. Right? I, I, can, I can take this weight. I can take this load. I can pull this thing for you. Uh -huh. 
but you've got to give it up. You've got to give it to me. And people need to understand that. Jesus wants our burdens because he wants us. Amen. Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 32. It's a continuation now of the same message that he's preaching. Chapter 6, uh, verse 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Amen. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is today, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe ye, or you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all of these things. Mm -hmm. So Jesus tells people that God isn't some far off, transient uh, deity. Uh, I said as a kid, I think I was, you know, I would have said if somebody asked me when I was young, when I was little, that I was a Christian. But probably more accurately, I was a deist. I did believe that there was a God, but I didn't really have a personal relationship right. with God. I didn't have any intimacy with God. I just believed that he existed right. and that he wasn't really interested in my pathetic little life, you know. And so uh, I, I think a lot of people are that way. Yeah. If they're That's asked, true. if they're given a question, they'll say, oh, yeah, I'm a Christian. But they don't have any exactly. relationship with God whatsoever. They just believe that he exists. Sure. That he's out there, it's like he just rolled the dice and now it's your game. You, let's see what you can do with it, you know. Uh -huh. Don't bug me about it. Just get on with it and, and do the best you can. So people need to know that uh, God wants communion with his creation. Amen. He wants interaction with us, with each of us. Amen. And Jesus taught that we should relate to God as a father. Yeah. How much more intimate can it get, you know. I mean, he's wanting us to feel like this is our daddy. This is our Abba father, you know. A father who, who provides, who loves you, who provides for you. A father who, uh, who says, if you ask, I'll give. If you seek, I'll show up. If you knock, I'll open the door. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. A father that's eager to provide for his children. Yes. And the Sermon on the Mount, if you read it without that understanding, it looks like, man, he's really laying the wood to us here. You know what I mean? Like, you got that. I can't just not kill somebody. I got to just not ever even hate somebody. I can't even, I mean, I'm not going to do adultery, but I mean, I looked and I can't, you know, but, you know, it sounds like he's just, man, he's just beating us up. But the truth is, the, the Sermon on the Mount is an act of pure grace. It's showing us in spite of all of these things that, that I say the law demands of you, I'm, get, I'm telling you, come to me. Yes. Cast your care. Don't worry. Trust in the love of a father who wants to provide even a means for your salvation. He set the bar here for you in order for you to be saved. And then he gives you the very means by which that can be attained Amen. through a sacrificial uh, intermediary. Praise the Lord. Amen. So Luke chapter 15, verses uh, 1 through 7. Luke 15, 1 through 7. This is just a continuation. Of this isn't part of the Sermon on the Mount, but it's another opportunity that Jesus has to teach. Right? Yes, sir. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners to hear him. And the Pharisees and the scribes murmured, saying, This man received sinners and eateth with them. So not only did all these sinners come, but these religious people are all there too, kind of eyeballing the whole thing to see if he's going to do it according to their rules according to their plan, right? Mm -hmm. So he goes on to talk about 
he spake a parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? Now, we're going to read on here, but let me just say this. We don't need to tell that same parable. It might work sometime. It might help. But what Jesus is trying to do is get personal. Right. He's trying to get to interact with these people right. who are mostly... It's an agrarian society. They're, they're farmers. They're, they're, they raise sheep. They, right. you know, it's not industrialized or anything. So that this is, these are the people. This is what they relate to, right? So when he hath found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he come home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Praise the Lord. So, one wayward sheep uh-huh. deeply matters to God. Yes. Yes. Amen? The one that's lost, the one that's alone, uh-huh. the one that's frightened, the one that's exposed, the one that's in danger, right. has tremendous value to God. Right. So it has to have to us. Exactly. Praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. The one sheep is actually worth pursuing. Amen. Amen. The one guy you teach, Tim, has tremendous value. Yes. Right? The, the, the neighbor, you know, the the, the co-worker, the, these people, it's just one person, but they have tremendous value to God. Exactly. To us, it's just a sheep. But the shepherd doesn't think anything in leaving the 99 in order to rescue one. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. When he finds it, the sheep isn't scolded. The sheep isn't no. rebuked. No. The sheep isn't whipped. No. Right? The sheep is not yelled at. He picks it up, puts it on his shoulders, and carries it back. Amen. And we've heard, all heard this, but let me just repeat it because it's so good. It's so true. What did the sheep do to repent? He consented to being picked up and carried back. Yep. Yep. He didn't do anything except not fight the love of the shepherd. Exactly. There you go. So when we talk about people repenting, don't confuse this with them telling you how sorry they are and going through all of that stuff, and I'll never do this again, and I'll never do that again. Help them to understand. Repentance is just simply to say, God is good, yeah. and I'm willing to accept that love. From God. Even though I don't understand the theology and all the, the ins and outs of it, but I just know that God must care. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Amen. Amen. Because you came to help me back. Yes. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Not only does he carry it back, but he throws a party. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I don't know about you, but to me that that seems extreme. A party over one sheep. Yeah. You got 99. Yeah. Heaven, it, it's just crazy, but <laughs> you, you know you've got all these scribes and Pharisees that are there. Right. And you got the sinners. Mm-hmm. But Jesus is saying, you know, heaven is, is fairly quiet over the 99 rule keepers. Uh-huh. But it gets outrageous. When one sinner Uh receives the love of God. When the grace of God touches one person. Praise the Lord. When that one cries out for grace, all of heaven breaks into their happy dance. Amen. It gets good all of a sudden. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's look at this one in Luke chapter 15, verses 8 through 10. Same environment. This is just a continuation of Jesus' teaching. Either that woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently until she finds it? And when she hath found it, she calls her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, I found the piece which I had lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of angels of God over one sinner that yes. repents. Yes. Again, back then, a silver coin was worth one day's wages. Generally speaking, mm-hmm. 
So could the woman survive without it? Probably. I mean, I don't know, I've worked a lot of jobs where there wasn't any sick days. You miss a day, you're sick, you just don't get paid. Right. We survived, it was a little harder because, mm -hmm. you know, you gotta go with that one, with, but you can still do it. Sure. And that's what I'm saying. So it wasn't like this was the end of the world for her, it was just one day's pay. She lights a lamp and frantically goes about searching until she finds it, and there it is, mm -hmm. the coin. Like the shepherd, she's filled with joy. Why? Because it's her coin. Yes. Right. What did the coin do? Nothing. Yeah. It just got found. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's all excited. Why? Because it was hers. It belonged to her. Yes. And she wanted it. Mm -hmm. We belong to God. Yes. This earth was created in his image. Yes. I'm talking about yes. humanity. They, we belong to God and God yes. wants them. And he'd do anything to reach them. Yes. How many know we are the light of the world? Mm -hmm. He has lit a lamp yes. so that we can find these lost coins. Yes. Amen? Mm -hmm. So that, why? Because they belong to him. Yes, Amen. They're his. They have value. They are important. Can he exist without them? Of course. He can exist without anything. Right. He's complete in himself. Right. But they're his and he wants them. Yes, Lord. Praise God. <laughs> now, so Jesus... He begins this, these stories with uh, animals and coins. But he's going somewhere. Right? He's trying to get their attention and get them to relate to this. Something they can relate to, right? right. right. Something that would, they can identify with. Sure. But now he goes to talk about people. Not just people, but rebellious people. Mm -hmm. People that don't care about their heavenly. They just want what they can get out of life and get on with it, right? This is the story of the prodigal son. We're not going to read it because I'm sure you all know the story. Right. But that's what comes next. And he's been leading up to this, right? Yeah. It's not by accident that that happens to be the next thing that comes out of his mouth is there was a father who had two sons, mm -hmm. right? And then he just goes on to tell the story. The prodigal son is, is familiar to all of us, but I want you to think about two things. Number one, Jesus is still sitting with these sinners and these religious leaders. They're all gathered around him. Number two, a parable is told with the intentions of bringing listeners into the story. Not just to hear the story, but to be drawn into the story so they can identify. So they can see themselves in the story. So... God specializes in separating your sin. This is the story. This is what people need to hear. This is his specialty. He specializes in separating your sins from you. As far as the east is from the west. Right? Never to be seen again. That's God's specialty. That's his priority. Because of God's love for people, for God's love for you, God forgets your sins. Yes, he does. He forgets your sins because he's purchased those sins in his own flesh. He's mm -hmm. taken the punishment for those sins mm -hmm. so that he can forgive. Amen. So they can be pushed away. Mm -hmm. He forgives. And then he pays our debt. And he treats you as if you were blameless. Right. As if you were spotless. Mm -hmm. And loved just like Jesus. Amen. This is exactly what we were talking about in the very beginning. Mm -hmm. People need to know they have value. Mm -hmm. yes. People need to know that even though others have rejected them, put them down, not respected them, not loved them, not cared about them. God loves you. Yes. God honors you. God yes. sees your value. God wants you to see your value. Mm -hmm. He validates you before you can validate yourself. Yes. He, te he declares how wonderful you are while you're still seeing yourself as something horrible. Mm -hmm. How's that ever going to happen if we don't do that? Exactly. If we don't do what Jesus was doing exactly. here. Praise the Lord. 
Jesus, God through Jesus, and by extension through us, continues inviting us and those that we reach out to right now, both to his present and his future love. No threats, no lectures, just a big hug and a party. Amen. Praise God. You say, well, that's, I, I'm, I'm afraid we're going to be too lenient. Don't you worry about it. You didn't die for anybody. Yeah. <laughs> let, let him worry about it. That's true. He paid the price, and he's willing to do it, so you, you just get with the program. Uh-huh. Lighten up, chill out, and let Jesus take care of it. Praise God. Exactly. Jesus declares the church, that's us, to be holy. And don't kid yourself that somehow he accidentally ended up with us. It isn't like he got us pregnant and had to marry us. Of course, that doesn't mean anything anymore either, but when I was a kid, it still mattered and people still felt a sense of responsibility. But I'm just saying. This isn't an accidental relationship. No, it isn't a, no. a forced marriage. It isn't a shotgun to, uh, you know, to Jesus to take us. Come on. He didn't accidentally end up with us. He had options. Yes. And he still has. Yes. And yet he chooses us. Yes, he yes. Did. With all the options he's got. Yes. He can do anything. He can be anywhere. He can have everything, which he does, but he wants us. Exactly. He chooses us. Exactly. And that's part of what it means to be God. Ugh. Having options. Amen. Amen. He gave the church his spirit as a guarantee that his love is real. Yes. That we can trust all of his promises because of this love. Mm-hmm. This love transcends the great uh, earthly love that we have for children or spouses or yes, parents. It's, it's so much beyond any earthly exactly. love that we can feel. I, yes. I mean, I think about that and I think, oh God, I don't know how that can be because if I just get a thought and the enemy will plant those, you know, grandkids going to something happen, there's going to be a wreck, there's going to be this, there'll be something, you know, how it, it, just, to, just to freak you out, just to get you all uptight. Yeah. And I think, there's no way anybody could love more than I love that individual or that, sit, you know what I mean? And yet God's love is so much greater than any love that I've ever felt or that has ever been felt by anybody outside of him. It's not some high school crush. This was God's plan from before the foundation of the world. Knowing us to be all that we were, he planned to seek us out find us and make us his bride. Yes. There's no strings attached. It's absolute grace poured out through Jesus. Amen. Through his broken body, through his shed blood. Mm-hmm. And I can tell you, I've been to a lot of weddings and usually there's a lot of celebrating going on after. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of joy. Because they don't know that it won't always be like this. It will always be this way with the Lord. That's the beauty. And that's why he has this great thrill, this great celebration. Amen. And and it brings joy unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. Amen. No condemnation. Just the love of a father. The love of a spouse. He embraces us. And he says, let the good times roll. The party starts here. Amen. Uh-huh. Give the Lord a hand clap. Praise God. Lord. Amen. So, you know, however we can find to share that, mm-hmm. however it works for the individual, because it isn't going to be the same for everybody, but you'll know. Sure. He said when you're brought before uh, people, you'll know what to say. Don't worry about it. When you get into that situation, I bet, I bet all of you have already experienced this. You're, you're with somebody who's troublesome, someone who is resistant, someone who is, you know, depressed and bummed out, knows whatever. And somehow you think, what in the world am I going to say that's going to help this person, knowing all of the stuff they're going through? And just somehow God gives you a word. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's just you put your arm around them and say, you know, 
I love you, God loves you, and we're praying for you. And trust me, it's going to get better. It's not going to always be this way. Amen? Amen. What, however it plays out, just remember, use the principles that Jesus gives us. You don't have to, you don't have to repeat the parable, but make it personal. Yes. Get, get them involved. Let them see themselves in this love that God has. Let them experience this love that God has for them. That's our responsibility. That's the only thing we really have to do when we're here. Amen. And I promise you this, if we would do this, we'll see healing, we'll see signs and wonders. Yeah. Because the signs and wonders are for them. Yes. We're supposed to be living by faith. I don't, I don't need right. another miracle to know that God is real, right. that God right. loves me, and that I've got eternal life through Jesus right. Christ. But there are people out there that have to have something True. tangible, something to, 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 to manifest this love that we're Amen. talking about. Amen. If we'll share Jesus in truth, in spirit and in truth, miracles will happen. Mm -hmm. They'll be the result of people reaching out to God. Amen. And God cannot turn away Amen. from a heart that reaches out to him. Amen. Amen? So let's just keep on keeping on for Jesus and watch what he'll do. Amen? Amen. Give the Lord another hand clap if you would. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen. God bless you all. Appreciate again you being here. God bless you. See you Sunday. Have a great rest of the week.